So today we are going to discuss about uh, the preparation methodology on KPTCL. Generally, <coughs> those who are electrical engineering students appearing for this examination, this lecture will give guidelines how to prepare, what are the subjects we have to concentrate, what are the textbooks we have to concentrate, plan of action, those things. Now you see here, in addition to our transmission company limited, KPTCL, Karnataka Power Transmission Corporation Limited, in addition to that, we have the jobs in various uh, DISCOM companies. DISCOM means distribution company. For example, you take uh, Bangalore Electricity uh, State Board of uh, Company. Similarly, this is Hubli and Mysore, Gulbarga, like that. They have different sectors. They are, in addition to transmission, they give a notification for DISCOM companies also. But however, however, the paper is same and uh, paper is for 100 marks. Out of 100, 75 marks is for engineering and 25 marks is the non-technical part like a aptitude. Sir, what are the general doubts uh, the students show while preparing for KPTL exam? Generally, the number one, student may have doubt. Uh, sir, what are the textbooks we have to prepare? So, what are the textbooks? Generally, when you go for a textbook's point of view, while you are preparing for competitive examination, if time span is less, for example, we have a couple of months only, two or three months examination is there, going for textbooks preparation is somewhat difficult from A to Z. Textbooks are required if you got any doubt in your, while you are preparing for a objective books. Under that condition, we require a textbook. Otherwise, the whatever you studied in academic year, entire almost all our uh, uh, VT University uh, syllabus, in that syllabus, what are the books you are using, those books you can prepare, but my advice is, instead of going for textbooks preparation, try to go for one coaching center material, because whatever information exactly you require, that is collected from the various textbooks, that is available in a material as a synopsis wise. That is more convenient. While you are preparing for synopsis, suppose if you got a doubt, under that condition, approaching for textbook for clarification of that particular doubt, you may require the textbook. Are you got the point? Anyhow, sir, what are the objective books we have? Generally, I am from director of Sai Meda. Sai Meda is established in 1994, uh, which is in uh, Hyderabad, that is uh, AP. Now we are conducting classes for KPTCL in Bangalore, in Sheshadripuram. Anyhow, uh, with that experience, actually I worked for a LHT board uh, for a couple of years. I resigned for my job for this uh, transco. In the transco, I resigned for my job because I am more fascinated towards this teaching and many of the students in uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, my students are working as assistant engineers, assistant division engineers. Some of my students are working as divisional engineers also. Many of them, they attended for our coaching center, they guided under Sai Medha, they got very good jobs and even in your YouTube also you can check uh, Sai Medha video lectures and something you can get my students feedback also, you can see that. But coming to this uh, Sai Medha, what we are providing, we are providing for a uh, uh, gate classes. In addition to this, uh, we can have a state government jobs. Uh, Sai Medha is provides uh, gate classes. We got all India first rank three times in the gate. Of course, many of students, our students are selected for uh, government sectors like uh, transmission, generation, or even uh, APPSC, uh, like that, public service commission examination, all these things. But recently, we started this coaching for, what is that? Uh, KPTCL also. With that, my 25 years of experience, I thought only for competitive examinations, not for the regular uh, academic year. I have very good experience with the competitive examinations. In the competitive examinations, how the questions will frame, how student can success within a short, uh, limited uh, time of interval, my guidance, I hope it must 
is more useful to the students. With that, uh, as per my knowledge is concerned, I am giving some ideas how to prepare. If you are interested, you can directly meet and attend for the uh, classes. Easily you can get the job. That is not be a problem for you. Anyhow, so what are the textbooks I told you? Textbooks is not preferable for the uh, this examination. All these points are included in a synopsis. Even uh, if you buy a same the material, each and every topic, if you take network analysis, for example, the network analysis having synopsis. First, you take one topic, synopsis is there. And afterwards, some examples are there. Uh, examples also level 1, level 2, level 3, something like that. And also some problems are coming, that problems will be solved in the material itself. The entire information is available and you can prepare for that material. Meanwhile, and uh, what are the objective big books we require? Generally, so many books are there in the market, but as per the KPTCL exam is concerned, that exam standard is not like a gate exam. Is not like a gate exam. Because in the gate examination, what is the speciality? I think you already completed your uh, graduation, so that you may have some idea on the gate question paper. Sir, in the gate question paper, what will happen is, most of the cases, the gate question paper will be prepared by the IIT professors, that is standard IIT professors, and also, that is research oriented questions, and most of the questions, every year, the new questions will appear in the examination. So, that is the reason, that standard, they don't give for our KPTCL exam. However, these previous gate questions may help you very lot for this examination. Even if you verify any state government, not only Transco, if you take any other example also, even discounts also if you take, or even generation company also you take, the questions from the previous gate and IES are important role, important role, because these questions are already available in the market. So that even sometimes the professors will go for what are the, how the questions are available in the previous gate. Based on that also they will prepare. But as per my knowledge is concerned, gate IES previous one mark questions are suggestible. One mark questions are suggestible. In addition to that, the basic fundamental questions are very, very, very important. If you take a, uh, an electrical engineering objective by J.B. Gupta. J.B. Gupta. This is one of the uh, standard objective book uh, for electrical engineering. I am not going to say that it is a high standard book. It is not a uh, high standard book. It is not a low standard book. This book is having very good information. Having plenty of bits, uh, including fundamental bits, uh, they given some questions for. What is that? Previous gate questions also included in J.P. Gupta. And then one more a textbook is there for electrical engineering objective. I am talking about electrical engineering only here. The Roy, what is that? Roy uh, is the author. Of course, this is a electrical engineering objective by Galgotia Publications. Galgotia Publications. You can buy this book also. Out of these books, uh, two books if you prepare, you will get a better idea on the objective questions. Napoli, sir, one suggestion I will give you. When you are preparing for most of the questions, don't buy hard the question. Don't remember the answer. Suppose if you prepare some 10 questions in the objective. So these 10 questions, out of 10 questions, after 10 questions, you are in a position to frame the 11th question yourself only. That is more important. Why? Because you take an example. For example, I will give you one example for you. The low resistance can be measured by... The low resistance is uh, measured by using... Something questions are given. Option A, this is ohm meter. Option B, megahertz. Option C, scaring bridge. Scaring a bridge. Option D, 
Kelvin's double bridge. Kelvin's double bridge. Something like that. So you see, this is the question given in a one competitive exam. This is one of the standard questions. One, one example I told you. The, how can you measure low resistance? How can you measure low resistance? It means if you are preparing for this type of questions, yes, the uh, textbook author is given Kelvin's double bridge. Of course. You should not be happy with this answer. Kelvin's double bridge, it's okay. Again, you should have a thinking all these three bridges, what is its quotients? For example, scaring bridge is there. What is the use of scaring bridge? Used for measurement of capacitance. Used for measure, measurement of capacitance. What is the Megger? It is also measurement of resistance, but it is used to measurement of the resistance, high resistance. What about ohm meter? It is also measurement of resistance. But it is a measurement of medium resistance. So, Kelvin's double bridge is used for measurement of low resistance, ohm meter, medium resistance, megger is a high resistance, scaling bridge is used for what is that? Capacitance measurement. Like that, once remaining answers are also having a question. Try to frame, try to think, uh, this answer is applicable for what question? This answer is applicable for what question? If you are in th thinking in such a manner, you will get a wide knowledge in the computer examination. Sir, some question you may have 4.5, 5 something volts, 6 volts, 7 volts, some options are there. Suppose your answer is 6 volts for one answer. You don't want to think about what is the uh, question for 4.5 something. This is not applicable for under these conditions. Some in some cases, there is a possibility of getting these type of questions. Under that condition, try to think what are the options for this. For example, one more question I will give you. For example, if you take Ohm's law, you are already very familiar with Ohm's law. It's all basic things. So, when you come to Ohm's law, what is the limitation of Ohm's law? Generally, examiner will ask you, what is the limitation of Ohm's law? Ohm's law limitation is, then what? It is not applicable if the network is having a non-linear, a circuit is a non-linear. Once if you know this one, immediately you should, you should get second idea. Sir, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's law are friends, as like. Because in the basic electrical engineering, most of the cases, whenever if circuit will come, we have to apply Ohm's law as well as Kirchhoff's law. What is the limitation for Kirchhoff's law? That is also a very important point. Generally, in the last uh, <coughs> uh, examination, they given one question for you. That is in a generation company. That is a question given in a generation company. So, if you come to the, uh, what is that? Kitchap's loss. Kitchap's law. What is the limitation of Kitchap's law? What is its limitation? As I told you, what is the limitation of Ohm's law? I told you. Generally, Kirchhoff's laws are not applicable. Are not applicable for what? What is the question you have? Kirchhoff's laws are not applicable. Option A, they given linear. Option B, non-linear. Option C, distributed. What is that? Distributed. Fourth option, D option is both non-linear and distributed. Non-linear and distributed. Can you guess the answer for this? This is the question given in a generation company. I told you already. Uh, we will go to the next discussion. Only sample examples I am talking. But uh, uh, it is not the class to discuss entire subject. Meanwhile, in the guidance, I am giving how the models, where you are doing the mistakes in the examination. Those things also we are talking here. Now, linear, non-linear, distributed, non-linear and distributed. Ohm's law limitation is not applicable to non-linear circuits. Now you see, this is the answer. Most of the cases, students will write non-linear and distributed. This type of biggest mistake, even it is a small mistake, but once mistake is happened, you may lose your 25% of mark as a negative marking in this examination. This is not the correct answer. The correct answer is 
it is not applicable if the network is a distributed network. What network? Distributed network. Sir, because you know Ohm's law is not applicable to non-linear, so that your mind is telling automatically it is also not applicable to non-linear. Kirchhoff's laws will not worried about the linear and non-linear. They are applicable only for, they will applicable for linear, non-linear, even if the network is lumped network, but uh, this cannot be applicable if the network is a distributed network. This should be very, very cautious. These type of important uh, conclusions you can get only by expert. If you are attending for my classes, even Sai Mehta classes, we have a very good expert team. All these things uh, where students are doing errors, these points they will mention. According to that, if you write the exam, easily you can get the job. So people getting uh, 60 to 70 marks or something like that, it is more easier. Of course, if the negative marking is not there. Whenever if negative marking will comes into the picture, you may not get the marks 80, 90, something like that. Humor errors are there, that may eliminate. My suggestion is that, because of we have 25% of negative marking here, that is one fourth of the mark will be cut down from your uh, uh, obtained marks uh, if you answer any question as a wrong, wrong manner. Now, <clears throat> if you see here, <clears throat> I told you, number one, textbooks is not required. Number two, objective books are required. What are the books required here? I told you. And uh, third one is, what is the third one? Sir, how many marks we have to score to get this job? I am suggesting you only one important point here. First preferences. If any textbook you have, for example, you take an example of power system. In power system, CL Vadva is one of the standard textbook. In that textbook, backside, we have more than objective, 500 and objective questions are there. You must have thorough knowledge about that 500 and plus bits analysis. Because any professor, any teacher, if they are approaching for power system, they will see what are the questions available in CL Vatva. Even if they are not seeing that questions, even in the market, I told you Galgote publications. Galgote publications, what are the questions are there? Those questions only. You see, once upon a time, in a long time, in 2003, when I am giving a coaching for Genco, generation company, actually, uh, at that time, after completion of exam, I checked all the questions. I have a one old objective, electrical engineering objective book, whose author name is H.M. Rai. H.M. Rai. But, what happened in the H.M. Rai? Around 85 questions are given only from that object to textbook. How many? 85 out of 100 questions. Sir, why they left it there's 15 questions, sir? Actually, that 15 question syllabus is not available in this book. That is the reason those questions are not copied. According to the syllabus, 85% of syllabus is there in the HMRI. That is the reason they given 85 questions, even including direct answers also. In that objective book, one wrong answer is there. One wrong question is framed. That question is also given as it is like that. Water hammering effect. Water hammering can be prevented by using some questions. As you know, water hammering effect in the, it will comes in the pen stocks. It can be avoided by using surge tank. But in that objective book, they given water hammering effect will avoided by using pen stocks. Such a mistake they written. Anyhow, those things are not required. Sometimes uh, they will give from the previous, uh, any questions from the objective bits. But out of 100 marks, my suggestion is that if you got a 70 marks, I can say for OC candidate, absolutely you will get the job. You need not worry about that one. Of course, sir, 70 we require. You know, if, uh, suppose I may not be able to get 60 marks also, sometimes it happens. Even for 60 marks, even for 50 marks or 5 marks also, you may get the job. The reason is that because of you have negative marking. 
you have negative margin so that if you have a reservation bc obc and sc st like that you can have four or five marks is uh, going back if suppose 70 marks uh, 60 marks is the cut off for a uh, uh, oc candidate 60 marks is the cut off it means that 16 to 70 marks who got for oc candidate everybody will get job in under that condition uh, bc candidate may get job for 55 marks and SC candidate may get for 50 marks. Even SC also may be 50 marks. Something like that. It is not an exact figure. Depending upon the question paper standard, this will decide sir, at, uh, for what marks we are going to get the particular job. Are you clear? So, I told you three points. One point is, what are the books required? Standard textbooks. Another one is, why objective books are prepared? In that I suggest you go for some materials and third one how many marks are required to get the job and what is the important point here don't attempt if you are not confident about the question. If you are not confident about the question if you attempt the question probability of getting negative mark is more chances rather than correct answer. So try to avoid if you have some more than 50% confident about that one, you attempt it. If you don't know exactly, question you are not seen earlier, you don't know the answer under that condition, leave it like that. Don't attempt like that. Don't attempt that question. That is my suggestion. Somebody will go to the examination. Uh, B, C, something, A, B, C, A, B, something, level light. If you are writing like that, sometimes you may get zero marks also, less than zero marks also, if you have a negative marking. It is not advisable. What questions you know, first phase, you try to attempt, suppose 100 questions are given. 100 questions are given. The first phase, if the, what is the procedure is, whatever questions you are feeling easy. Theory questions are there. It don't take much time to solve the problem. All the type of questions, even 40 or 50, whatever you got, you answer those questions. Assuming that in the first attempt, easily, within a half an hour at time, sometimes you may answer 50 questions nearly. You don't require any much time for thinking of that particular question. That type of question you answer. Take second phase. In the second phase, you know that question, but it takes some time to solve. That type of questions you write down. You may get some, uh, think it, solve it, tells, spend some time. That may give some 20 to 30 questions. 20 to 30 questions. Finally, third phase, you come to third phase. The leftover questions are some 25 or something like that. Average if I consider, leftover questions are 25. Whether we have to answer it or not. Here you should spend some more time. Whether if you know, you have not seen that question earlier, don't attempt, just leave it. Then again, you think, recollect it, some answer you got. Then you try to attempt. Like that, phase by phase, if you work, uh, then uh, this is the generally. Don't feel any tension in the examination hall. You must be very relaxed uh, before going to the examination. Some students will do. So tomorrow is the exam. If today I will work more in the daytime, uh, complete night, uh, they will work out and they will go to the exam. Under that condition, students may fail. Because if continuously night, if you are not slept, uh, you are not sleep, having sufficient sleep, what will happen? Mind gets stressed. Under that stress condition, if you are writing examination, your mind will not work properly. So that is the reason. Last one week, you should have a proper maintenance of time up to 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, whatever your convenient time. If you are preparing, exam before D is also, you should close everything and don't tension for anything. And my advice is, even if you are sleeping, try to think about uh, what are the questions will come. You try to frame the questions in the mind. Something like that. That give fetch more. Don't seeing every time copying, not like that. If you are a best analyzer, if you take some topic and uh, you know, today you prepared 150 objective bits, assuming that in one subject, suppose take transformer, you prepared some 50 objective bits. Out of 50, you did mistake 10 questions. Before you are sleeping, just you are sleeping, while you are, before going to sleep also, what are the 10 questions I did mistake? What is the reason for that? 
like that like that like that like that you analyze it and go into the sleep so and even in the early morning you wake up what are the questions i revised what are the mistakes i did how can you, i can overcome those mistakes these things are very very important while preparing for examination now what are the uh, subjects we have to concentrate sir so what are the subjects we have to concentrate normally in electrical engineering what subjects are there what are the weightages of that subjects that we will discuss one by one clearly of course i will give only overall idea because it is not the time if you are interested all the videos are available in our sai meda according to the uh, transmission company limited we taught all the subjects if you prepare those subjects and try to prepare the material what we provided easily you are going to get the job this is i can say 100% you are employee somewhere you are employee you don't have time to attending for a regular coaching under that condition what you are going to do whenever if you have a time without internet also in your laptop we will give our information to you video lectures you go through it and see lectures and every one every topic will have unlimited times until if you understand you can do it you can get it afterwards you try to practice in the material easily you can get a job so coming to this uh, <coughs> subjects are concerned any electrical engineering student electrical engineering student preparing for competitive exams not only for transmission company or for discoms even for gate even for ies or any other examination that is related to our engineering syllabus the first preferable circuit subject is network analysis network analysis or circuit theory also we can call as circuit theory or even electrical circuits this can be called sometimes it is electrical circuits sir without knowing anything about this subject without knowing the clear details of these subjects going preparation for other subjects is a meaningless because every subject if you go for a, a any mission if you want to take a some vector diagram you should know phase angles you should know what is where is voltage where is current and all this those phase angle fundamentals we can get here we will write r plus j omega l where you learned that one that is from our circuit theory only ac fundamentals even faraday's laws we are applying everywhere e is equal to l into da by dt something like that where you will get that is only from the basic subjects so that is the reason the first most important subject for the network analysis in our exam here i can have a idea you can get a some 8 to 2 10 questions from this particular topic 8 to 2 10 questions sir where is that 8 to 2 10 questions sir number 1 we can have a basic elements what are the basic elements sir what are the basic elements we have r l and c resistance inductance and capacitance r l c so in the basic elements active element passive element linear non linear Uh, time variant time invariant lump or distributed what are the basic uh, resistance behavior what are the units for this how uh, length is increased how the resistance value becomes inductance connected in series parallel combination from that we have one object to beat afterwards in most of the cases in the basic fundamentals if you have a two lamps like this two lamps are connected in series it has some 40 watts it has some 60 watts which of the bulb will glow very bright that question is a standard one or otherwise you can have a two bulbs like this two bulbs are connected in parallel it will have ratings of one is 40 watts other one is 60 watts which of the following bulb will glow bright if you compare these two question this is more popular because this question is common thing we are seeing parallel connections daily this question is most of the cases expected and afterwards what you can have kit charge current law kcl and kvl generally kcl and kvl you may have theory questions i already told you limitation of kit charge laws or otherwise some branches some what is this current by knowing the other currents we can apply kcl and kvl 
and next of course kcl and kvl once a student knows the mesh and node analysis is extension of kcl and kvl only so mesh and node analysis mesh analysis is based on kvl node analysis is based on kcl of course with this all we can have very 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 important topic without this there is no question paper most of the cases that is network theorems this is a very very important topic in the networks so i told you one question is from basic elements other is from lamp connection other is from basic class not only ohms law kirchhoff's law even faraday's law also you can have a question something like that out of this the most important one is theorems sorry the theorem itself also we have again importance is there what is that importance basically even if you see last 10 years got question papers of the gate or even last 10 years of the engineering service exam paper 90% of the times we have question on thevenin's theorem thevenin's theorem and one more once if you know thevenin's you need not worry about nortons both are friends thevenin's is a voltage source nortons is a current source thevenin's is a open circuit voltage nortons is a short circuit current of course thevenin's is knows automatically student can easily answer about the nortons the second most important thing is superposition theorem why because in any network having more than one source two or more sources the most of the cases the way to solve that problem is using only superposition theorem that is the reason it is also an important and one more frequent asking question is maximum power transfer theorem maximum power transfer theorem so out of these theorems you may have chance of getting at least two questions also from this one are you got it why out of this the first most important is thevenin's next is superposition next is maximum sir you are telling all these things other theorems we don't want to read you even if you take a uh, maxwell's theorem and uh, reciprocity theorem telegan theorem but the chances are less you try to learn one time limited problems are there you can approach those problems sometimes they will give but most of the times they will concentrate on this particular theorems after theorems one more very 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 important uh, topic uh, that is transients what is that sir transients why because transients because our electrical engineering is an rlc elements what is that rlc elements once uh, if you have a network with a dc source or something like that suddenly when switch is closed how the behavior you should know it uh, because while you are designing for any equipment before that we should know what is the severity that severity calculations we can get only by using transient analysis so must and should you can have a question from the transient analysis the next one is two port theorems or two port parameters two port theorems two port parameters not theorems two port parameters and the last one of course it is also very important that is not last one uh, series resonance that is i can say steady state analysis in steady state analysis again we have topics rms value average value rl circuit rc circuit some wave of form is given what is the form factor what is the peak factor those things also we should calculate that is come under the ac fundamentals in ac fundamentals form factor rms value average value peak factor for different waves square wave is given what is the importance of that some so, uh, sawtooth is given what is the importance of that what is the rms value what is the peak value a sinusoidal wave is given what is the form factor for that one those things are come under ac fundamental analysis and uh, coming to the rl rc rlc circuit steady state analysis after the transients we have a steady state analysis out of this the very very important topic is in rlc circuit we have a resonance what is that resonance especially 
you should have question from either from series resonance or parallel resonance. Most of the cases we can get question from a series resonance. Series resonance is one question. AC fundamentals is one question. Transients is one question. Two port parameters is one question. Network theorems is one or two questions. Lamps one question. Basic fundamentals another question. And finally, you may have questions in a three-phase circuits. In three-phase circuits, what is the relation between line voltage, phase voltage, delta connected, star connection and power calculation? Out of all that, measurement of power in a three-phase circuit is a very, very, very important one. By using two watt meter method. Two watt meter method can be applicable to measure a load is balanced or unbalanced in a three-phase circuit. That is the reason in two watt meter method we can have a question. So I told you 8 to 10 questions. What are the areas from this basic circuit elements? RLC, LAMS, um, uh, LASU, basic LASU, theorems, and transients, study state analysis, in that AC fundamentals, resonance, two port networks, as well as three phase circuits. This is the uh, most of the topics which is covered under this network analysis. After the network analysis, what is the weightage subject in our electrical engineering? Of course, the most important uh, um, subject, any engineering, electrical engineering student will like these subjects and even we may have a special interest on this subject also. What are that subject? I think you got idea. When I am speaking all these things, you got an idea. So, the second one, the most weightage subject in our electrical engineering is power systems. Power system. In this power system, how many questions we can guess? Of course, it is not exact values. As per the previous questions, with my knowledge, I am telling you. So, I hope we can have questions because we have only 75 questions, not, not over 100 questions. The weightage you will have some 12 to 16 or even more than that also. But minimum worst case, 12 is worst case it is. 16 is average case. Sometimes they will give 20 questions also. How the questions are? Where is the areas we have to consider? Coming to the power system, we have power system generation, power system transmission, power system protection, of course transmission and distribution and uh, power system analysis. In the power system analysis, again we can say that fault analysis and load flows analysis and stability analysis. This is part of analysis, this is the basic part. And miscellaneous topics may be there like uh, lightning arresters, earthing methods that may come under power system protection also. But these are the general topics which we have. Sir, in the case of generation, generation topic, we have Hydro power station, thermal power station, and uh, nuclear power station. Out of these three generating stations, we have two questions. What is the purpose of such tank? What is medium head? What is low head? What is specific speed? What is the height of the turbine? What is the applications based on water head? What is the water flow in the direction? What is the reaction turbine? What are the examples for impulse turbine? These are all the areas where we will have a chance of getting question. Hydro is no doubt one question is compulsory. Thermal is also very very important. Sometimes they will go for nuclear. Nuclear is an extension of thermal. You may have boiler here, you may have nuclear reactor. Other components, the, what is that? Uh, turbine, condenser and all these things are same whether it is a thermal or nuclear. Coming to the transmission and distribution, it has very good weightage. It has very good weightage 
in our power system. Sir, in the transmission, you can guess at least a minimum of five questions. Because this is the very area where we have questions, combination of theory as well as a simple problems without calculator. Now, in the transmission, what are the questions we can get? Basically, ABCD, that is performance of transmission lines. Performance of transmission lines. Sir, what is the performance of transmission lines? Voltage regulation, efficiency calculations, ABCD parameters, surge impedance, propagation constant, basic things. Those are all come under performance of transmission lines. Afterwards, we have ferratic effect. Sir, if you want to see my class, just some sample videos are available. Not only this lecture, sample video, power system class by Sai Medha Ramana. You see, just I taught a, uh, what is that, ferratic effect. What you studied in your college, exactly what is required for competitive examination, you can understand very easily by seeing that video. Ferratic effect, corona loss, and basic effects and also uh, inductance and capacitance calculation in transmission line. Out of that, the most important thing is bundled conductor question. Sometimes though, in the gate question papers, uh, questions will not repeat. The only repeated question, very few questions are there in that the bundled conductors, corona loss are the repeated questions. Afterwards, we have insulators. Disc insulators, suspension insulators, applications. For example, if you go for 220 kV line, what is the type of insulators we are using? How many discs are required? If your line is crossing, what type of insulator? Sometimes they will ask a special questions like a post insulator. Where we are using post insulator? What is the difference between pin insulator to post insulator? These things we should know it. And uh, the important one in an insulator's topic is uh, problem. String efficiency, line voltage calculations, that is also a very important thing. And uh, cables, in the cables, capacitance calculation, charging currents, uh, as well as uh, uh, what are the cables used, applications of cables, potential gradient, insulation resistance of the cable is a very important thing. You can see in your exam also. What is the relation between length and insulation resistance? After writing the exam, you come and check my video, this question in your exam. That's such an important question it is. So, that is the areas where the transmission. Coming to the protection, mainly we have relays and circuit breakers. In the relays, we can have a two questions. In the relays, whatever the topic you study, there is no problems in the relays. Only there are two or three models of problems. What are that? One is plug setting multiplier calculation. In induction over current relay, there is a plug setting multiplier calculation. Without that, you don't go to the exam. You see what are the different problems, how to solve it. You should know it. And then again, when you are going for protection of a transformers, in a three-phase transformer, how the CTs are connected, what is the CT ratios problem is also a important one. Have you got it? CT ratios. These are only the probability of problems in the relays. And one more problem is there. It may require calculator. That is, in the case of alternator, using differential relay, suppose phase to ground fault is occurs, how much winding is protected, how much winding is not protected. What is the percentage of the winding is protected? What is the percentage of A winding is not protected? That question, rare cases you may get that question. Out of that, there is no problems in the relays. Remaining all, if you take relays, the protection against the transmission lines, protection against the uh, synchronous missions, protection against the alternators. That is, synchronous mission and alternate both are same. Don't confuse for that. Transformer actually. So, you can have outline. If you are preparing, you should have a table. Suppose, a protection of transmission line. What are the relays we are using? What are the conclusions? Protection of alternator, stator side, rotor side. What are the relays we are using? Well, positive sequence, negative sequence, what currents, what type of relay? Coming to the transformer, buckholes relay, differential relay, three-phase transformer, connections, applications, uh, overfluxing relay. Like that, you take outlines on table easily. 
your mind will give a very good correct answer in the examination hall. Such a clarity is required. And coming to the circuit breaker, you can have circuit breaker. Uh, one question you can have, especially like, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, you can have restriking voltage. Recovery voltage. Rate of restriking voltage. And also, making current, breaking current, problems in the relays, circuit breakers also important. Especially, uh, what are the arc quenching methods in a circuit breakers is an important thing. And also, what is that? Applications of the circuit breaker. Sometimes, uh, examiner want to give a simple questions. They will ask about fuse. What is the material used for fuse? If this rating is there, what fuse? Fuse properties what? Fusing current is what? Fusing factor is what? These are very simple questions. Where lightning arrestors are placed? These type of fundamental questions we can get uh, from this particular protection time point of view. Sir, fault analysis, two or three questions. It's a very, very important topic. So, transmission lines and distribution is one of the super important and afterwards fault analysis also important. Here what we have the positive sequence currents, negative sequence currents, positive sequence impedance, negative sequence impedance and also calculate of line to ground fault, line to line fault as well as double line to ground fault to calculation of what? Per unit currents as well as the fault current in amperes. These things also very important. Don't forget that we can have operator A, delta, something like that. How the questions will frame and uh, all these things are very important. Each and every point you can check it. Out of that, per unit calculation, per unit calculation, knowing the old value of impedance, how can you calculate the new value of per unit impedance is also important. And load flows, you can have one question, stability. What is a uh, transient stability, what is the side stability, how to improve stability, critical critical angle, critical clearance angle from that. Here you can have the uh, energy storing problems. That is a standard formula for that energy storage stability, load flows one question, fault is two to three questions, protection is three questions, transmission lines five questions, generation two questions and one more important is economics, power system economics, load factor, diversity factor, uh, demand factor, out of that, if two plants or alternators are working, economical load dispatching is a very, very important point. Economical load of dispatching. Without that question, we don't have a question paper. That is also such an important question here. So, this is about the outlines of a power system. So, the most, uh, another important topic in our uh, KPT cell exam is uh, electrical machines. This is a very, very important topic among all the topics after networks. Networks is the basic fundamental to learn. And uh, most of the questions we can guess from electrical machines also. In the machines, we have four machines. What are that? Transformers, induction motor. In induction motor, we have three-phase induction motor and a single-phase induction motor. And other one is synchronous machine and uh, DC machines. These are all the syllabus is given in uh, Vishweshwara University. The syllabus of this exam is based on the Vishweshwara University curriculum syllabus so that we are talking all these things. So in each and every mission have weightage near about four marks I can say. Sir, in a transformer, what are the areas we have to concentrate, sir? Generally, in the transformer, the first most important is a small, simple problems and losses and efficiency. And then regulation, problems in regulations. The most important one is auto transformer. And three-phase transformers, their connections. And the parallel operation of transformers. And basic Fundamentals like winding, core, oil, basic fundamentals of transformers. These are the general topics where we can have. Coming to three-phase induction motor, slip calculations, torque slip calculations. 
as well as sorting methods, induction motor sorting methods, DOL sorter, sort delta sorter, auto transformer sorter, something like that. Next one is speed control and power slip torque relationships. Power and slip, output power, input power, slip relationship. Torque slip characteristics. And coming to the single phase induction motor, most of the cases they will give applications. So, for example, ceiling fan is there. What is the type of uh, motor used? Like, uh, these are more application point of view. Capacitor sort, shaded pole motor, hysteresis motor. If you go for computers, what type of motors are using? Stepper motor application is what? Something like that. In synchronous mission, we have synchronous generator and synchronous motor. In synchronous generator, what are the questions we have? Differences between silent pole and a smooth cylindrical type. Next to pitch factor, coil span factor and a distribution factor. From that there is a one question. Voltage regulation one question. Armature reaction one question. Parallel operation of the synchronous machine is one question. Coming to synchronous motor, most important one is starting how to start synchronous motor. Very very important one is damper windings, V arrows, inverted V arrows, excitation changes, what will happen to other things. This is the areas we can have. Coming to DC mission, here also we have generator and a motor. In the motor, DC motor, DC series motor where we are using. DC shunt motor where we are using. How the torque and the speed characteristics. EMF power developed and speed relationships. Those things are important. Coming to the generator point of view, construction details of the DC generator, commutation, armature reaction. What is that? Armature reaction, condition for back EMF, voltage and back EMF for maximum power develop. What are the losses in generator? These are the areas. Every mission will have four questions compulsory. Student after network analysis, the most important concentration of the subject is electrical missions. The, afterwards, these missions, we can have a power system. And again, the topic is very simple, but which is very important, that is measuring instruments. Measuring instruments. Sir, coming to the measuring instruments, we have indicating instruments. What are the torques we have? Deflecting torque, controlling torque, da damping torque. From that, there is a question of charge. Type of mission, for example, which of the following instrument is used for AC supply? Which of the following instrument is used for DC, PMMC, moving iron, dynamometer typo, hot wire, thermocouple, induction typo, electrostatic typo, rectifier typo. What are the reads, RMS values or average values or peak values? What are the scales they have? Uh, square law scale, uniform scale or any other scale, logarithmic scale, anything is having. What type of damping is used? We can have a clarity on that one. Extension of ammeter and voltmeter, there is a one question. Error analysis, one question is compulsory. Measurement of energy, energy meter, there is a standard question. Measurement of power is an important question. And also, sometimes they will go for electronic instruments like a CRO and digital voltmeter. Compulsory, you can have in the measuring instruments also 4 to 5 questions. Another one is power electronics. What is that? Power electronics. Coming to power electronics, we have power electronic devices, SCR, TRIARC, DIARC, and uh, LASCR, etc. So many devices are there. ICBT. In this, uh, from SCR itself, 100% question. Remaining miscellaneous devices, you can have one question. Converters, one question. Inverters, choppers, cyclo converters, they related mathematical equations and applications are more important towards the power electronics. And the other one, you can have what like uh, sometimes they will give digital and analog questions, number systems, data representations, sequential circuits, A to D converters, D to A converters and uh, miscellaneous topics, combinational, multiplexer is an important one. And coming to analog circuits, if that syllabus is given, we have to prepare for uh, operational amplifier, feedback amplifiers, transistor biasing and um, MOSFET to FET applications, transistor working operation, these are the areas we can have. With this, uh, our uh, KPTCL and uh, various DISCOMS uh, lecture is we are going to complete it. Those who are interested to take regular coaching in Sai Meda, you can contact, uh, of course, 
it is displaying the number already 94949412348 is the head office uh, of sai meda number you can contact here and uh, even if you verify sai meda.com if you want to get a address of uh, bangalore where it is and corresponding bangalore address also you can get there with including phone number you, we are providing daily classes as well as uh, weekend batches those who are not able to attend for these classes we are providing video lectures with a uh, two years validity uh, with a secure format you can see the those videos in your mobile or in your laptop whatever component we have with that you can see i am going to say all the best for you to prepare for this examination